Hi all, I have a very interesting game from the Candidates tournament to show you in round four. This was like a pass pawn drama on both sides of the board. Vladimir Kramnik against Fabiano Caruana. So let's see what happens. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight F6, the Petrov defense, Petrov's defense. Knight takes E5, D6, Knight F3, Knight takes E4. Now Queen E2, this gets the Queens off quite early and sets the scene for potentially uh, the pass pawns of the end game more easily. Bishop e3, bishop e7, white castles queenside, black castles, rook comes to the center, bishop f6, knight d2, rook e8, bishop f3, so good central control it seems uh, for both sides, both sides pieces are quite good. Knight e5, bishop f4, and now king f8 protecting that rook, bishop d5, c6 not minding about d6 being potentially a bit vulnerable here, bishop f5, h3, g5, very aggressive, g5 here, bishop h2. Now possibly, because of g4 maybe being an issue, it might be the safest thing to actually, um, sorry, in this position, c4 was played, maybe... A safe move is rookie free here so to be able to answer g4 with f4 now what happens in the game uh, and you know why it would be okay here for example g takes uh, knight takes why it should be okay there there's no major past pawns emerging no drama there for past pawns but instead in the game we get c4 and so this starts to be a bit interesting g4 because White's intention is not to take on g4 here. He's actually letting this puncture happen of his pawns on the king's side. White actually plays now knight e4. If if he plays hg, already you can see that black is in really good shape here. This position, it looks nasty, these bishops, that nasty pin. And if black gets in knight e3, it just, it just looks as though black's got the small edge. So it seems here... Uh, after g4 uh, so we have we have c4 g4 here we have knight e4 things start to get a, a little bit crazy bishop takes e4 extinguishing the threats on d6 and f6 rook takes now check and now g takes h3 is played yeah and you can see uh this this is a really uh, tricky situation, and if White just got rid of the past pawn issue here, then f5 this position should be okay for Black. This is quite comfortable for Black. This scenario, even though it's opposite color bishops, Black's again got uh, a small edge there. So things start to go a bit crazy though because. Um, here after, after the check g takes we just have this totally ignored actually with the move c5 <laughs> it's totally ignored i mean it looks really really scary to allow this because then the f3 square knight comes to f3 but there's there's a really nifty idea behind c5 not just to immediately undermine the e5 knight so we have f5 and the idea is rook b4 yeah switching to b4 to hit uh, b7 so you can see d6 e5 is vulnerable but d6 and b7 black just takes on g2 so we've got this pass pawn now on g2 so yeah a bit of pass pawn drama already and furthermore white is now getting his own dangerous pass pawn on d6 black is cashing out a bit trying to win a piece now basically white just plays this casually just just giving up a whole bishop. He wants to just promote his past pawns now. So knight takes, bishop takes c6, and also trying to eliminate at the same time black's dangerous past pawn. So a very interesting peace sacrifice with great dynamic potential now. So uh, getting rid of that dangerous past pawn there. You can see, look at the, these pawns. Can black really do something about this? Rook takes f2, bishop c6, supporting the d7 one. Now rook takes a7, so we've got a 3-0 to zero pawn majority, and we've got a big pawn on d7. Black has got 
the H pawn to play with and the F pawn. And also to try and create some threats around the king, potentially. So rook g1, h6, rook c7, though as rook c8 is getting dangerous. King g7 to try and unpin, not have that pinned. a4, white's pawn starts storming down now. You might think rook c8 is dangerous here, but it seems king f7, and this this is fine for black. There's always a back row issue, for example, here. There's a back row issue tying white down. So it's not that easy to break through with the d7 pawn at the moment. So a4, so we've got the reinforcements coming in. Bishop b5, king e7, a5. So this is this is much quicker than this at the moment. Rook f4, c3, king d6, rook b7, rook g4, rook e1, f4, a6. But you know, isn't this going to be just simply winning now? H5, black finally gets his pawn going here a7 rook a8 now funny enough this seems to be a critical moment of the game right here at move 43 uh mysteriously you might think uh yeah it seems b4 was played it seems i don't know if this is some sort of general lesson for people with past pawns but it seems if you try and sometimes connect the opponent's king it seems this move because it's connected to the opponent's king more is quite dangerous example h4 c5 check so it's running with tempo there for this check and this gets to be a very good position potentially for white where yeah he's material up and uh it's it's going to be winning for white so yeah you know you can scoop up material potentially as well in this line um it's uh of course easy for computers to see c4 might be more accurate than b4 but it is connected with c5 check trying to sort of get this pawn going it seems yeah just a very very interesting um position now on king c5 then b4 check this is very dynamic where white is still uh yeah with this hitting the rook there white's pawn still become uh triumphant triumphant here uh and it should be you know winning for white white has a big advantage but uh, yeah, it's it's very very complicated stuff though. So b4 was played, and you might think, well, why not? You know, c4, c5, it is kind of connected to the thing, but not as quickly. So let's see, h4, c4. So you might think, what's the big deal? h3, c5 check, king e5, rook b8 is played now. Black takes this, rook g8, uh, trying to take off the bishop to queen the pawn, bishop f6 d8 uh, the thing is in this position if rook takes g4 uh, there's actually uh, a key move here king f5 and for example this is checkmate here this is showing king safety for white here is suspect the knight's covering that escape square so there are some very dangerous variations for white's king all of a sudden there so anyway so d8 was played bishop takes rook takes bishop f6 so again this setting up this menacing mating that rook g6 rook b7 bishop e2 rook takes b4 check and it seems black is at least okay now uh, the past pawn drama has been resolved to a large extent. There's only one past pawn now there. And black's got two past pawns after all of that. Who would have thought? Black's got more dangerous past pawns now coming up. Check. Knight f3. Check. Rook takes d1. So the smoke's clearing. Um, yeah, after, after this, by the way, if king takes d1, h2, this position bishop h4 black has a big advantage there so yeah uh it's uh pretty tricky so that's so we have bishop a6 i know it's crazy it introduces bishop b7 check uh as well as uh leaving the rook and bishop hanging i know it's just a crazy position uh rook d2 check uh bishop b2 check king takes c5 Bishop b7 here, but yeah, black is uh, starting to be in the driving seat now. Clearly, two passed pawns and extra material. 
and the game ended here so yeah that was an absolutely crazy game and really i just wanted to point out some of the fundamental themes about the past pawns it's 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 a game you know you could spend like two hours analyzing but uh yeah i just i just wanted to like touch on the interesting themes that were created so vladimir kramnik um nearly another brilliancy game with his past pawns nearly uh in this final position okay if rook f8 bishop c3 bishop e4 check knight c4 yeah uh this is very dangerous now for white it's that's why it's kind of losing uh this position yeah it's um the past pawns are too dangerous king safety is bad everything's gone pear shaped so anyway after f2 uh vladimir had to resign but yeah, very enterprising play uh, to just let his king side go basically and get loads of past pawns over here. But it seems yeah, at a critical moment, it seems that c4 might be more accurate than b4 at a critical moment, which would have like been the difference between proving the concept and the concept falling a bit flat, as as in the game continuation. But crazy stuff, yeah, indeed. It's not just about the past pawns; it's about the position of the king, etc both kings king safety and stuff like that so very concrete in the end comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much